Hi, welcome back. This is session two of the OCL expressions. Extending the model with a fruit bowl, giving it a property name. And uh, this is also new that you, when you enter code comments on classes, um, you will have access to them in the OCL editor. So this will help you when, as your model grows to know what is what. So in the OCL editor, whenever you edit something and you point at it, it says the code comments. So that's an ex a, a new thing. Okay, um, the fruit bowl, it's supposed to contain fruit. Toggle square line to ensure that the line, association line is always squared. I'm gonna give the association ends better names than the defaults. And this is the multiplicity and it's zero to many. And in the other end, it's zero to one. So a fruit can be in one bowl and a bowl can contain many fruits. That's either an orange or an apple. Rereading the model. I'm create a bow. And this is a way to, in OCL, to introduce temporary variables that make it easier for you to set multiple properties. Just showing you for for this is the purpose of this video. So let the let operator. Temp is a temporary variable, fruit bowl create in, and then you can use the temp variable. So you can set the property. So this is one expression that creates and sets the property in one go. Gonna create another one, plastic bowl. One glass bowl and one plastic bowl. And there we have them. First I'm gonna work on the glass bowl. That's a collection of fruit bowl, but I just want the one, so I say first. And the fruit in bow, that's the collection of fruit. I want to add fruit. Add operator. So now I need to find a fruit. fruit all instances, but that's a collection of fruit. I need one fruit to add. I'm gonna use the add zero operator again. Grabbing the zero fruit, the first fruit. And then I'll change this to add another fruit. Like this. And then I would be able to see, or rather, in the glass bowl. The fruit in bowl. I see I have three fruits, two oranges and one apple. Okay. 
and let's add an attribute that states what it contains it contains this fruit I'm gonna make that the right and the derivation should be fruit in bow presentation but that will be a collection of string we need a single string and there's an operator as comma list that simply takes a list of strings and sets a comma between each we read the model hmm. like that contains this fruit And that's the glass bowl. But um, OCL also has an if operator. So let's see if the fruit in bowl is empty, then we return the string new fruit at all. Else we return the one that we just constructed and if is important to end your expression and both parts of the expression must return the same type in this case a string so if we look at all the fruit balls and we can spell all instances correct we see that the glass ball has fruits and the plastic ball has no fruit at all but if I were to add a fruit to the glass ball, the derived property would get another apple in this case. Undo that, redo, undo. So fully subscribe. And what if we were to add one to the plastic bowl? And now we will see an important principle that our model states that the fruit can only be in one uh, bowl at a time. So adding it to the other bowl, to the plastic bowl, actually removes it from the glass bowl. Um, this is of course obvious, but not so obvious when programming against databases, etc. Modeling really helps us to work in a high level of abstraction to do things right, just as they supposed to be straight away, avoiding a lot of simple mistakes. We have a group by operator in OCL that we can use to certain things. Let's see how it works. If you have a collection of something, you can collect over it and state what you want to group by. What's the unique property that you want to isolate and keep um, and sort um, to, to group the other items by. So I want to order by the type, the OCL type name. Wait a minute, this wasn't what I expected. It's a string. Ah, I wrote the wrong thing. I wrote the property contains this fruit when I intended to write the association fruit in bowl. So now I have um, first part one that will contain the type name and then a list, a list of the ones that uh, are of that type. So then we can continue and use the um, result. Okay, 
can collect over it. And get the presentation of each fruit in the list. Yeah, since the list contains many, it will be a collection of. Oh, um, actually, the the list needs to have a. Um, what's wrong? Let's see what's wrong. Uh, it needs to have, uh, it's case sensitive. The property was named list with a big L. So we need to get that like this. As comma list to reduce the collection of strings to a simple string. Okay. So, and the, um, now we have grouped um, the fruits in the bowl, uh, oranges on one end and apples on the other end. And when we remove or move the fruit we will see the effect and let's copy that and do add yet another tuple part <clears throat> summing up the weights so there is no CL operator sum that just adds up all the numbers. And let's elaborate a bit on what to write. So the orange weight sums up to 43 grams. The apple weight sums up to 21 grams. Um, but the group by <coughs> only checks on type name. What we can do is also add another criteria to the grouping. And that would be what bowl the fruit is in. Like that. So now we know what bowl the fruit is in and we could use that information in our text presentation. <clears throat> the tuple is X and there is a new part of the tuple but wait a minute it's not called part 2 since this is a strict model name in bowl we can use that when we create the tuple so that's used uh, so this expression uh, it's rather hairy but um, uh, if we remove the criteria to only check the glass bowl we will see the the use of it so now we sum up uh, and see that the plastic pole has a weight of 23 grams. Let's add another derived attribute on the fruit bowl, summing up the, the weight of the contents derived. Derivation OCL should grab the should grab the fruit in the bowl the weight and the operator sum so rereading the model <laughs> and we 
we see the weight of the contents and we see that contains this fruit etc and if we add a, a move a fruit the things update In the debugger, you can add your own variables to make it easier for you to do things. Let's add a variable for the glass bowl and another one for the plastic bowl. So this is the name of the variable, colon, the type of the variable. Then an action. And you can, there are three collections m at m1 m2 and m3 that you can easily assign to from the selected things in in the result list so this will give you a, a good way to access specific objects so let's see if i manage to assign the glass bowl to m1 and then the plastic bowl to M2, which I selected like that. Okay. So these are actually uh, collections of one. No, they, they are you know, objects. Sorry. So the glass bowl is of type. Uh, fruit bowl, so it has the property contains this fruit And you can follow the associations The OCL editor is acting up. I'm I'm taking notes to fix this after I've done this presentation So what I really want to do now is to show you some of the <clears throat> operators that, that uh, work on, on collections. So we have the union of course, we see, saw that before. And we also have an operator called intersection that's useful from time to time intersection is uh, the, the well it's the intersection between two uh, collections so uh, what equals the two collections what thing is in both so if I do the glass bowl and a collection with uh, orange all instances I will get all oranges in the glass bowl the fruit all instances will of course return all the contents of the glass bowl because there's nothing else than fruit in it another operator um, symmetric difference the sets contain uh, contain all the elements that are in set 2 <clears throat> and set 1 and set 2 but not in both so these will this will be the all the fruits that aren't assigned any fruit bowl then on the apples so um, I urge you to 
uh, get to know these operators as they will help you to express yourself and to, to get the business rules that you're after in an efficient manner. Um, yet another operator is the difference. It's like the symmetric difference, but it's trickier because um, it's not symmetric. So you need to take care of uh, what collection you put where. So if you flip this around, you will get another a very different result. The collection one and the collection two, that is. So again, just um, <clears throat> try them out. It's easy to to do in the debugger. And uh, I will uh, close this session and get right back with uh, the third part. Thank you for listening so far.